We are off to Oxford, aren't we? Yeah. Got my book. Hi folks, Dane here and today we're off on an adventure. So my girlfriend and I went off to Oxford for just the one night. It's about an hour's drive away. We stayed at this little travel lodge here. I'm going to show you some of the books I was reading along the way as we got lots of reading done throughout our travels. Here we are off to the library, off to the Bodleian Library. So first off we'll just show you some of the different architecture around the town. Really nice place to go just to visit. It's very touristy and lots of people everywhere which I didn't like too much. Also very expensive but you know you get to see beautiful sites like this. So this is the Bodleian Library. It is the oldest university library in the United Kingdom. You can go around inside and actually go for a tour but we just kind of had a look at the architecture and then nipped into the gift shop as well. So as you can tell it's an absolutely huge place and the architecture is stunning, even these cobbled paths are great. We're going to have a look at some of the different doors as well because obviously they all have these Latin titles so I think that's the School of Natural Philosophy there. What's this one? The, the School of Medicine I think that was. Some nice statues, that's where you can go inside in there. But we headed off from there, we wanted to go and pay a visit to the Covered Market. So here we are at the Covered Market. Absolutely huge indoors, established 1774 it says there. Lots of different stores, it's basically what you'd expect from a covered market. We didn't stay too long because Becca needed the toilet and so did I, so yeah. <laughs> this here is the Story Museum, those lights there say speak friend and enter. And uh, there's a little little rabbit, is that Alice in Wonderland I think there? It's kind of, um, it's an interesting place because you can go around and you can interact with a lot of the different exhibits as well. And they have different rooms for all sorts of things, so this is a diff little kind of screening room in here. They also had this thing where you could go around with this little ID badge that was like a QR code and then you could play these interactive games. But they hadn't activated Windows and I thought that was hilarious. Lots of stuff on how to make stories. This here is a little thing you can vote in on how you like to, you know, enjoy a story. Do you like to listen to an audiobook? Do you like to read it? Which I think most people did in this little voting system thingy. That's what I voted for anyway. So here's the ID badges in action with the little QR codes. That lady was crazy as well. Oh, that's cool. Jasper Ford's written on this. He wrote Lost in a Good Book. Yep, read that. The Well of Lost Plots. So this was really cool because this was an old desk of Jasper Ford's and so I decided to write a little poem on it while I was there. I have The Princess Bride on a poster here which is probably one of my favourite movies. The book was good as well but I do enjoy the movie more just because I've seen it so many times. There's a little studio that you can go into and you can be green screened into something. Something about Benjamin Zephaniah. Read a fair amount of his work. You couldn't actually go through that Here, here Be Dragons door, so it's kind of a redundant sign, really. Innocent Bubbles. <laughs> so I've just found out my Discworld rat name, which was very cool. There's lots of cool stuff here for like various different stories that I read. I was assuming it was going to be more for children, but there was like Discworld, Philip Pullman was there, I had uh, Mouse by Art Spiegelman is represented in a little bit, there's Animal Farm, so... It was actually really interesting to get this behind the scenes look at a lot of stuff, so you get to see things like the original illustrations, the the wardrobe that Lyra hid in when she overheard Lord Asriel in the Northern Lights book, which is my favourite book of all time, so that was pretty cool. You can find out who your demon is meant to be. Obviously the mouse thing is very cool as well. Then there's the Eagle and Child and that is the pub that J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis and basically they were a part of a literary group called the Inklings and they all used to drink in there. So we went along for a few beers as well. They also had board games that you could play. 
So they were playing a lot of bad music in there as well. But I had read on, I think it was on TripAdvisor or on Google that they, they play rubbish music in there all the time. Which seems kind of incongruous for the literary thing, but never mind. We played this Grand Prix game, and obviously I won. <laughs> I get very competitive about these things. We also played this game called Over the Hill, which we didn't really know how to play. So we just sort of turned it into a trivia game. And it was super old as well. It was like, look, how many princes and princesses will there be in 1987? Some nachos, jigsaw times, and then back to the hotel. Oh, Frederick, are you all right? Yes. <coughs> that was me laughing at Gene Wilder. It still makes me laugh. To the castle quarter. Yeah. There was a guy playing Johnny Be Good on a sort of steel lap guitar, which was always good. Weird sign outside O'Neill's. This is the second day. That's the White Rabbit, which I assume is named after, uh, you know, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. A little spoken word place that I didn't go to. Board game cafe. And here is a bookshop that I did go into, and they had uh, two brand new books for £5, which is about 6 $7. Not bad. Then we went off to Oxford Castle. That is the Oxford Castle Mound. What's quite cool is that you can actually wander around the outside of the castle you don't, for free. You don't have to pay unless you want to go in and go on a little guided tour. Ah, uh -huh. I am stuck. My head's too big. Those are some stocks that we got stuck in, I guess. It's a really odd place. The castle used to be a working jail until about 15, 20 years ago. And now it's been turned into a hotel as well. It's kind of sad to see that happen. It's kind of a weird place, but and it's kind of sad to see it happen, but at the same time, at least they are preserving it, you know. They have knocked out holes in the walls to put those windows in, which you can kind of see in this shot, but... Still a beautiful little place to walk around, though. There's a little stone saying that old Queenie was over here to open it up. And uh, we're going to fade out here, and I'm going to show you some of the books and stuff that I got while we were away as well. So, yeah. Alright, so we just got back from Oxford and I wanted to do a little bit of a, a haul to show you some of the bits and bobs we got while we were there. And uh, I thought Becca would like to join me, so I asked and she said yes. So, do you want to say hello to the people of Booktube? Hello people of Booktube. Who, who's your favourite Booktuber? Oh no, this is terrible. Who, who were we watching the other day? We were watching, um, what's her name? We were watching Lisa and I can't remember her surname. She was talking about her Primark call, Harry oh, Potter yes. Primark call. Should we start with our Harry Potter Primark call? Yes, please. Do you want to introduce this item? We'll start with this item. This is, this is one that I think people will get excited about because it will appear in the backdrop of videos and will join the army of pugs. Yeah. Okay. So this is our Harry Potter pillow. Yeah. How, how much was this? Six pounds. And how much is that for Americans? Eight dollars fifty, something like that. Yeah. Call it ten. Call it ten. It was a bit cheaper than that, though. Yeah, and it's lovely. And on the back, on the reverse, it is the uh, Hogwarts logo. So this is a Harry Potter LED light, and it's the Hogwarts logo. You can kind of see it there. Oh, it's so cool! Oh, look at it. <laughs> Turn it around properly, like this. Ah. Oh. It looks backwards in the preview, but it's not yeah. backwards, just to clarify. Right. Okay, next up we have the coasters. Yes. So we have four coasters. Oh look, they're officially licensed. They have this on the reverse. We're both Slytherin, and it only comes with one Slytherin, so we, we're going to have to fight over it. So that's that's the Primark stuff. Yeah. All right, what we got over here? Okay, let's do these. I got these little, mm. these little fridge magnets. Yeah. So what I do with most places I go to now, is I get two fridge magnets. Because we have one fridge magnet for our freezer, weirdly enough. Oh, and our fridge, we do have some on there. And then I give another one to my mum because she's collecting them. I got this, you may notice that face. That is J.R.R. Tolkien smoking a pipe <laughs> on a postcard. And we got this for, it was a pound actually, but it's all right. I'm going to put it on my bookcase, I think. And that was from, um, uh, what's it called? The Eagle and Child. We also went to the Bodleian Library. It's the oldest university library in the UK, I believe. Mm. And Oxford University is old. Yeah. It's like, I think I worked out, didn't it? It, it, it celebrated its 850th birthday recently. It's yeah. crazy. 
anyway, I got these lovely little fridge magnets. Got to do the tapping. There we go. Speaking of things that go into my mother, little bookmark. <laughs> Again, of the Bodleian or Bodleian. Bodleian. It's probably Bodleian. Bodleian, darling. Yes, yes. Bodleian. This is a postcard that I've only just realised I was going to write and post this, but I normally do it late anyway. Yeah. Sorry, I'm covering your face with my hand needlessly. Like, it's in front of my face anyway, but they yeah. might as well, you know, it might as well at least show your face. No. So it's nice to have some beauty on this channel for a change instead of just me <laughs> looking unwashed. And then I've got this, which is a little placard thing. It's the Bodleian or Bodleian Reader's Oath. <laughs> and it says, uh, on seeking admission to the Bodleian Library, every reader is required to repeat aloud the traditional declaration printed on this sign. The original Latin promise of 1412 was rewritten in English by Thomas Bodley in the early 1600s. Please read this declaration aloud when asked. I hereby undertake not to remove from the library or to mark, deface or injure in any way any volume, document or other object belonging to it or in its custody. Not to bring into the library or kindle therein any fire or flame and not to smoke in the library, and I promise to obey all rules of the library. And my computer just beeped, but I'm not going to edit that out. No. I'm going to mute it though. Was there more? Ooh. It's just me books. So this is Truman Capote, Summer's Crossing, and I've never read it, or heard of it for that matter, but I have read Breakfast at Tiffany's, so I thought, why the hell not? Okay, then I got Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale. Somehow I haven't got around to reading this yet, but obviously everyone's kind of raging about it because of, I think it's HBO that did the series, isn't it? I don't know. But anyway, there's a, a TV series of it now. I haven't seen that either, and I do kind of want to see it, but I want to read the book first. Then we have Kurt Vonnegut, Cat's Cradle, and this is a pretty cool cover of that. So I've read some Vonnegut before and Cat's Cradle is probably arguably his most well-known one and I haven't read it so I saw it and I was like, better get it. Brett Easton Ellis, American Psycho, is one that, again that a lot of people really love. So it's, oh yeah, Patrick Bateman, because I always think it's, he, he, I always used to get Patrick Bateman and Norman Bates confused because Norman Bates is, a, is in Psycho and Patrick Bateman is in American Psycho. And we've got some non-fiction, so this is Roberto Escobar. Escobar. Drugs, guns, money, power. Murderer. Yeah. Oh, I could have just looked in it there. Yeah, yeah. Drug dealer, politician, devil, saint. I just find Pablo Escobar fascinating and there's a lot of like Netflix documentaries. We've watched a few, haven't we? Yeah, recently. And, uh, and like Narcos is great as well. Yeah. So I thought I'd pick that up, especially because it's written by his brother. And then we got Nick Cave and the ass saw the angel. You're supposed like to be showing it to them, not looking no, at the know, cover I yourself. No, I know. I was looking at it. No, it I... looks good. I like the cover. Yeah, well, Nick Cave is uh, of the Bad Seeds. He's a musician. I like his music. Don't know what this is. Didn't even look at it. I just saw it was written by Nick Cave. I was like, good. Right, I'll read that. So, uh, yeah, that's what we got in Oxford. All of the bookish things we managed to find. Please hit like if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want more bookish videos. Leave a comment if you want Becca to star in more of these videos as well. And we will both see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.